you from the channel Learn From Basics. In this video, we are going to make a really cool project using OpenCV in Python. And that pro project is basically a smart attendance system. Now, you might be wondering, what does a smart attendance system do? Well, do you know how when you go to school, your teacher takes about five minutes of the class calling out each and everyone's name in order to make sure that they're present in class? Well, that takes five minutes of your class time, which which in class is valuable because you can learn a lot of more cool things in school if you had those extra five minutes instead of taking attendance. So that's where our smart attendance system program comes into play. We are basically going to make a program that uses our webcam in order to recognize faces and whenever that face enters the class or whenever that person enters the class, it's going to note down who entered the class and at what time they entered the class. So in this way, the attendance process is going to be is going to be way faster and again yes this is just a fun project that we're going to do in python and we're actually going to learn a lot but the two main things we're going to be focusing on in this project is going to be number one recognizing and distinguishing faces from one another so this is basically face detection so we're going to learn how to do face detection with opencv in python yeah, isn't that cool? Then we are going to learn how to store who came to class and at what time they came to class in a folder, in which later on in another video, we're going to export to a website which shows all the data. But that's for another video. So we're mainly going to focus on face detection and basically editing a file or a folder or a file in order to store who came to class and at what time. So let's focus on face detection first, shall we? So where are fa where is face detection used? Well, here are some examples that come to mind. Face detection can be used, face detection is used in Apple's famous Face ID. Now, the technology Apple uses in order to, in order to detect faces is way different than the one we're going to use. In fact, they use infrared light and whatnot in different types of sensors in order to accurately detect your face. And we're not, we're obviously not going to do that, but that's pretty cool. And if you want to learn more about Apple's Face ID, I'll link an article down below. Then we have Facebook's face detection. And I'll tell you how Facebook uses face detection later on in this course. Well, after we complete the slide, I'm going to tell you how face book uses face detection on its website and app and Facebook's method of face detection is actually the method that we'll be using. And last but not least, we have face detection used in a camera. Now camera, many camera apps and in fact cameras also use face detection or mild face detection in, in order to locate all the faces in the frame in order to make the picture quality better. And again, I'll link an article that shows how uh, how this feature helps make pictures better. So, back to the Facebook thing. How does Facebook use face detection in, well, its application? Well, we're going to learn that right now. Hey guys, so now, as you can see, we are in an article that was written by Adam Geetge. I'm sorry if I read that wrong. But um, this basically explains how Facebook uses face detection in um, in its application, and we're I'm going to briefly skim over this app, briefly skim over this um, uh, this text page in order to get a mild understanding of face detection. So let's read this paragraph really quick. Have you noticed that Facebook has developed an uncanny ability to recognize your friends in your photographs? In the old days, Facebook used to make you tag your friends in photos by clicking on them and typing in their name. Now as, you, now, as you upload a photo, Facebook tags everyone for you like magic. So yes, whenever you upload a photo or video on Facebook, do you know how Facebook automatically tags all of your friends who are in the photo so they can check out the photo too? Well, it uses face detection. So it, it, it uses face detection to detect all the faces in the photo. And then, it again, it uses face detection to detect who each and every person are. And then... After it does that, it basically tags them. So how does how does it do that? Because we can recognize faces pretty easily. 
But have you ever wondered how we recognize faces? Well, we are going to learn about how computers recognize faces. So again, this um, article says this technology is called face, re face recognition or face detection. And did you know that Facebook can recognize faces with a 98% accuracy rate, which is about pretty much as good as humans can do. So let's so let's talk about how face detection how face detection works. So over here they basically use an example of um, Will Ferrell and Chad Smith, uh, two favorite um, two famous celebrities, and we're going to distinguish be between them. So first, here are all the steps that we do in face detection. So first, we look at the picture and filed, find all the faces in it. Second, we focus on each face and we'll be able to understand that even if a face is turned in a weird direction, like it's turned to the right and it's in a bad lighting, um, with practice, the, the library that we'll be using is going to kind of guess or infer how the face is going to look and it's going to turn the face so it's kind of like in a perfect straight, straight view where we can see each and every part of the face. Third, we need to be able to pick out unique features of the face that you can use to tell it apart from other people, like how big the eyes are, how long the face is, etc. So if you think about this, this is how we um, also detect faces. So some people have bigger eyes and smaller nose, while other people have smaller eyes and maybe a smaller nose and maybe a bigger um, mouth. And the distance between one person's eyes and another person's eyes is also going to be different. So there are many measurements that we can use in order to differ differentiate one person from another. Finally, we're go we are going to have to compare all of the unique features of that face to tell all the people you already know to with all the people that you already know in order to de determine the person's name. So, as you can see, we first find a really good image of the face, and then we analyze the face features. And then we compare it against the known faces, and then we w make predictions. So as you can see, this there's a really cool um, here's a really cool like video, short video. So as you can see, this is how face um recognition is used in um camera apps. So it detects all the faces. So what we are basically doing is I'm going to make this way shorter. We're basically taking faces, and then as I said, each face has unique has unique landmarks like the eyes, nose, mouth and etc. So what we're going to what face detection does is it takes all of those unique landmarks. It takes all of the those unique landmarks and what it does is it produces it produces almost uh, so it So as you can see, it produces almost 128 measurements from the input image you gave and it basically it basically generates 128 measurements and no matter how that person is or how old that person is all of these 128 measurements will always be the same well most of the time so what we're basically going to do is we basically as i said we take all the all the main um landmarks on our face and then we produce 128 measurements from that face and then when we're in real time, we again detect a face, we detect all of its landmarks and all of its measurements. And then we compare all of these measurements to the new measurements we have. And this process is basically called encoding our face. So you can, um, you can learn more about this cool feature in this article by reading it. I'll, put, I'll post the link down below. But now let's get on to programming. So. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to open PyCharm. Over here, we're going to open PyCharm. That should take a second. So, again, um, if you don't know, PyCharm is the text editor that I use in order to write Python code. It's actually a really good text editor. So if you don't have that, go ahead and download PyCharm. And so we're going to create a new project. And I'm going to name it smart underscore attendance underscore system and then we're basically going to create this project
in this window. Now, as you can see, Python's creating the virtual in my, in my environment, which will take a second or two. So after the virtual environment is done, we'll, we'll ask, we are actually going to download some libraries that we'll need in order to perform face detection. And how this is going to go is first we're going to write a program that's basically going to detect faces. And then in the second one, we're going to finish our fun project of a smart attendance system. So first, let's delete all of this. We don't need all of this. And I'm going to rename this rename file to face underscore detection dot pi. Okay, so now what we're going to do guys is we are going to add some add some libraries that we'll need in order to perform this. So we're going to go, we're going to go to file settings. And now we're going to go to over here where it says project Python interpreter. And as you can see, now we only have pip and setup tools. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this plus button over here. And the first thing we're going to download is CMake. So as you can see, CMake, we have CMake, um, CMake by uh, Gene Christoph, or this name. So we're going to install the package. And these packages at first time take a bit of time to um, install. But CMake shouldn't take that much time to install, so. So as you can see, package CMake, it has been installed successfully. So now we're going to move on to the next one, Dlib. And I actually had a little bit of a problem with Dlib version 21. So I would recommend going to specify version and typing in Dlib 19.18. Now we're going to install this package. And if I'm not wrong, this should take a long time to install because that's my prior experience. So I'll skip to the part where where this has already been installed. Hey guys, so my um my dlib just got downloaded, which I'll show you here in a second. So as you can see, it says packages dlib just got downloaded in 19.18. And I just noticed that for many people who are doing this project, maybe, you're going to get an error message. And the reason you're going to get an error message is because you need to download Visual Studio. So how are we going to do that? Well, you simply type in Visual Studio Downloader or Installer over here. And once you download that, in a second or two, there should be a platform that pops up, as you can see. And if you go to, so I already have this installed. But if you go to available, you should have uh, an application called Visual Studio Community 2019 version. So I want you to go ahead and download that. And when you download that, in the process, you're going to get a page that looks something like that. That says workloads. And then the workload you can choose, you can choose multiple workloads, but you have to choose the desktop development with C++ work workload. And after you do that, you're pretty much good to go to download Dlib. And again, Dlib takes a lot of time. So I think it took me almost 30 minutes to download or something. But maybe if you have a, a faster computer, it's faster. Who knows? Now, the next thing we're going to download is we are going to download the face recognition API. So, I mean, not API, the face recognition uh, library. So face recognition. We if we type in face and then recognition, recognition. So as you can see, the author is Adam him again so um you should be able to download this you don't have to specify the version this time so if you just click on install package i also think this should take a lot of time if i'm correct but i don't think it takes that much time so again just like last time i'll be back when this package gets installed hey guys so the face detection um package didn't take that long as long as i thought to open or download so as you can see i have my face rec recognition package downloaded and to finish it off we just need two more packages open cv python which i already have downloaded so i'm not going to click on install package and finally numpy which again i already have downloaded so i'm not going to click on install packages 
So now what we're going to do next is we're going to click on OK and make sure that we have all the packages needed, which are NumPy, CMake, Dlib, Face Recognition, NumPy, again, OpenCV, Python, and that's it. So now let's write our code. So first, let's import all the libraries. So I'm going to make my program neat and I'm going to label everything. Importing libraries. So this is the importing libraries section. So let's run with that. One typo. Highlight all problems. Yeah, whatever. So we're going to import all of the libraries, which is going, our first library is going to be import CV2 and then import NumPy. And since NumPy is kind of long, we're going to say as NPY. Then we're going to say import open. Uh, I mean, we're going to import the face recognition package and we're going to say as face rec because again, the face recognition is a long word to type. Now, what we're going to do is we need to import an, an test image or a, a basic input image that we're going to give the computer in order to like learn how our face looks like. So you can just take a own photo of your face or something in general. You can just take a snap of a snapshot of your face and that would be fine. But if you're on a Windows laptop, this is how I recommend doing it. So go to Windows, go to camera. So go to camera and then you should uh, pop up on the camera so that this is me. Hello. So what we're going to do is we are basically going to um, we are basically going to want to have the camera in a position where there's good lighting and it can see all of our facial facial landmarks like our nose, eyes and mouth. And we also want it to be to where. It, there is a bounding box or a square around our face. So after we have both of those conditions done, we're just going to take a normal picture. Now, after we take the picture, what we want to do is we want to go to the picture. And then if you think the picture is fine, what we want to do is we want to click on over here and then open folder. Now, I'm, I already took that picture before we're going to delete that. Just to delete delete that now what we're going to do is we're going to first we're going to go to the folder we, where we have the smart attendance system and we're going to create a new folder and we are going to call it well we can call it anything but i'm going to say um sample underscore images so now what we're going to do is we are going to take this image control exit and control v it now we're going to rename this so it's easier to type I'm going to name it, oh, control V. Oh, so we're going to rename it. And I'm going to name it Joshi because that's my name. And now we need a second image or a test image. So in order to do that, we're going to go back to the camera app. And this time we're going to tilt our face a bit. So to where you can kind of see your eye, but you can't quite. Just to make sure that our camera has our face facial image right so we're going to tilt our head a bit and then snap a picture okay so now after you have your picture snapped make sure that everything looks fine and then we are going to open this in the folder and then again we're going to do the same thing Control x go back to this sample images folder and now we're going to rename it and i'm going to name this joshik test so my name underscore test. Now guys, we're going to go back to the program. And what we're going to do is we are going to import each one of these. So how are we going to do that? Well, first we're going to say image declaration. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to name a variable. So Joshik equal to, so this can Joshik, it can be a name or any variable name. And then we can use the um, cv2 that I am get I am read, but I what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a method that face the face recognition packages gave us. So we're going to say face rec dot load image file, and then we're going to type the path for a file, which is in this case sample images and then joshik jpeg. So sample images slash joshik dot jpeg. And then we're going to do the same thing for Joshik test. So we're going to say Joshik test. And over here, the variable is also going to be Joshik test. 
Now, guys, what we're going to do is, um, so we're basically going to print these images or show these images, which is going to be easy. We're going to use the CV2 method, CV2.imshow, main underscore image, and then Joshik, and then we're going to copy paste that, and now we're going to say test image, Joshik test, and then we're going to add a weight key of cv2 dot weight key of zero and then we're going to say cv2 dot destroy all windows now um in a second we should have two images pop up so as you can see both of these image look weird don't they because you can see that like um my skin is blue and everything and they're just too big so we need to do two things well if your image is all right you don't have to do this next part but if your image is too big just like mine i would recommend doing this so we need to do two things number one we need to turn back this image into a normal image so the colors are not all distorted so let's do that first shall we so how are we going to do that well we're going to say joshik equal to cv2.cvt color so convert color and then what do we want to convert the color of? Well, we want to convert the color of Joshik. And then we want it to go from that weird color scale, which is BGR, to the regular color scale, which is RGB. So we're going to say CV2 dot color. So this is all caps, color, underscore, BGR, which is the weird one, to RGB. And then we're going to copy this, paste it right over here. And we're going to say Joshik test. And we're also going to say Joshik test. Now, if we display this, you can see it's back to normal. But it's still a bit too big, isn't it? So that's going to be our next task. This image is a bit too big. So as I said, in our next task, we're basically going to make the image smaller. And if your image is already small, you can skip this uh, step again. Just, um, just skip like a minute or two and you should be good. But if your image is really big, then here's what we're going to do. We are going to first declare a new section, which is going to be image, I mean um, functions, and we're going to make a function. We're going to say define, resize, and we're going to take two parameters, the frame or the image and the size. Now what we're going to do is we're going to write some simple code. We're going to say the width of our image is going to be int our image times the size our image dot shape of zero or of one which is the width times the size and then we're going to copy and paste that we're going to make the zero so image dot shape of zero is the height of the image and we're going to make also this times the size and as you can see i spelled height wrong so we're going to change that. And now what we're finally going to do is we are going to say our the dimensions, final dimensions or dimensions are going to equal to a tuple of the width and the height. And then we're going to return cb 2resize And then the source is going to be our main image. And then we're going to say dimensions. And then the interpolation is going to be cv2 dot enter area cv2 dot enter area so now we're going to use this property on both of our images and you can so we're going to say joshik and then the size you can mess around so you can say 0 0.50 or 0 0.25 but if you use the method which i used which is using the camera app to snap your image i would say you say 0 0.50 but again you can you can use any any value that's under a one, so 0 0.90 or something like that, and it will slowly start decreasing your picture size. So I would just recommend messing around until you have your preferred size. So we're gonna say Joshik test. Oh, and I also say Joshik is equal to resize. And over here, we also have to say Joshik test is equal to resize. So now, if we run this, we should have our images smaller. So as you can see, our images are smaller, and they are in the right color. So now, 
let's start our face recognition, shall we? So the first thing we have to do in both of these images is we need to find where the face is. We need to find the face location. And we're just going to do this so we know if our, uh, if our program is detecting the right face. So we're gonna delete both of those, stop the program. And now we're gonna say finding face location. And now what we're going to do is we are going to say face location face location underscore joshik because this is going to be the face location of the face in this image or our main image and we're going to say face rec dot face locations and now we're going to pass the image which is going to be joshik and that's all we're going to do and since this is an image we're going to simply say zero now what 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 we're going to do is you know how, you remember how um, I said that, you remember how I said that our, f um, the face recognition package that we just downloaded um, makes up almost one, um, like brings up almost 126 or something measurements of our face. And then we use that measurements to uh, recognize uh, if the face is my face or another person's face. Well, again, do you remember how I said that process is called encoding the face? Well, that's what we're going to do next. After we find the face location, we're going to encode the face. So we're going to encode my face. So we can use that encoding data to recognize if I am in the frame or not. So we're gonna say encode. And again, this is going to be encoding my original face. So encode Joshik equal to face rec dot face underscore encoding. And then again, we're basically going to say, we're going to give the source of where my original face is, which is going to be Joshik. And since this is just an image, we're gonna say zero. And now just to make sure that the computer is recognizing my face correct, we're gonna draw a rectangle around my face, which is easy, cv2 dot rectangle Joshik and then the points are going to be face location, Joshik of three and face location, Joshik of zero. So the face location um, function that we used gives us back uh, four values. So we're going to say that. And then in our second, um, in, our sec in our second point, we're gonna say face location, Joshik of one and face location, Joshik of two. And then we're going to declare the color, which I'm going to give 2550 and 255. Let's bring that down. And then last but not least, we're going to give the thickness, which I'm gonna say three maybe. Now let's do this process over again for our test image, which is Joshik test. So all we're going to do is we're gonna copy that, paste that down here. And now we're basically going to take, change all the Joshik to Joshik test. So instead of face location Joshik, we're gonna say face location Joshik test. And over here, instead of Joshik, we're gonna say underscore Joshik test. Same here, Joshik test, and encode uh, face location Joshik test. And then we're gonna say rectangle, and we want to draw the rectangle on Joshik test. So now, how about we show all of these images again? So let's make sure that our faces or the computer is detecting our faces correctly. So as you can see, our computer is detecting the faces correctly. Yes, this is off by a bit, but that's okay. That really shouldn't make that much of a big difference. Now let's stop this. And what we're going to do is just for fun, let's display all of the encoding values. So we're gonna say print, and we're going to first print encode Joshik, and then we're going to print encode Joshik test. So let's do that again. Again, it takes some time to compile or, yeah. So now as you can see, we have all of the values over here for Joshik and all of the values over here for Joshik test. And if you can read each one of them, they are actually similar. So what we're going to do is we are basically going to 
Now, since we have our encodings ready, we are basically going to, well, we're going to compare both of our faces. So let's delete this. And comparing our faces is actually easy. We're going to say results equal to face, face rec dot. And we're, then we're going to say compare faces. And now first we're going to give all of our source images or our main images. So since we only have one main image, which is going to be Joshik, we're going to pass that. So Joshik, oops, Joshik. And now we have to tell the computer what we're going to compare Joshik with, which is going to be, actually, no, this is encode Joshik. So remember, encode Joshik. And we have to tell the computer what we're going to compare encode Joshik with, which is encode Joshik test. Now we're going to say print the result, please. Print result. So let's run this test again, and we should get a true. So as you can see, it says true. Yes. So now just to make this a bit more fancy per se, we are going to put some text. CV2.put text. CV2.put text. And Joe Schick test. I mean, CV2.put text. And we're going to put this on Joe Schick test. And then the text is going to be F of results. And then we're going to say 50. So we're going to say the, we're going to say 50, 50, which is the origin 50, 50. And then CV2 dot font, which is going to be Hershey's. So you can choose anyone. I'm just going to choose um, Hershey's complex. And then we're going to choose a thickness of one and finally we're going to choose a color of maybe black so actually no, let's just choose blue 255 and then the thick thickness is going to be two and that should be it so that should take a second or two so as you can see it says true over here now, just to test, what we're going to do is we're going to go on to Google and we're going to say, we're going to say, well, um, maybe a picture of, picture of Elon Musk. Why not? So now we're going to go over here. We're going to take one of Elon Musk's images. We're going to save this image as. So we're actually going to save this in, so we're going to go to Python proje projects, our smart attendance system, and then sample images. And we're going to save it there. And we're going to name this just Elon Musk, Elon Musk. We're going to save it. Now over here where it says, so let's stop this program first. And now over here where it says, um, for the test image, you know how I said Joshik test? Well, over here, instead of Joshik test, we say, Elon Musk JPEG. Now we should get a result of false. This should take a second or two. So as you can see, it says false because, well, I'm not Elon Musk, unfortunately. Or fortunately, I don't know. But as you can see, our face recognition works and isn't that fabulous. So you can see how easy this code is. We just we just completed a full on face recognition with just a simple 39 lines of OpenCV code or Python code. So this is how we do face recognition, guys. And in our next part, we're basically going to use this and kind of combine this to another simple program to make a smart attendance system. Hey, guys, so we completed the face detection. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move on to our main program or our main project, which is the smart attendance system. <clears throat> so before you do that, what I want you to do is I want you to go to the smart attendance system folder or our main project folder. And then I want you to create a subfolder uh, that you can name it whatever you want, but I'm going to name it student images. And inside that subfolder, what I want you to do is I basically want you to store a bunch of images of all the people that you want to detect. So I have Joe Biden, myself, and Obama. 
So just uh, snap a picture of all of the students or people that you want to be able to detect. <clears throat> and make sure that you have their name dot jpeg because we're going to be using their name in a second and you'll i'll tell you'll probably figure out why we want to name the file of their picture with their name <coughs> so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new file we're going to name it uh, python file and we're going to name it um smart attendance attendance system program yeah that should be good <clears throat> now we're going to import our main files which is import cb2 and then import numpy is import numpy and since that's too long we can say npy and import face rec face recognition as face rec because again face recognition is just too long <clears throat> so guys the next thing we're going to do is first if all of your images are the size that you want and they're not too big, then you can completely skip this step. But I'm going to do this because I snapped, again, I snapped all of these images from my webcam. So they're kind of too big. So I want to make them small. So we're basically going to go to face detection. And then we're going to copy this function that we made. And we're going to paste it over here. <coughs> and then, guys... The next thing we're going to do is we we need a way to, well, get all of the images from, we need a way to get all of the images from this folder, from the student images folder, and we need a way to get all of their encoding and to refer to each one of those pictures. And we need a faster way to do that because in our previous Example in the face detection, we had to go in and manually say Joshik equal to face rec dot load image file. Now imagine you're a teacher and you have about hundred students. This means that you have to repeat this pro you have to repeat this process, so you have to write these three lines of code over a hundred times. So and we don't want to do that. We want to find an easier way to get all of the images from this student images folder and basically store store the image convert it to from bgr to rgb and then resize it uh, if they need to be resized <clears throat> so how are we going to do that well we're going to write a function for that too but before we do that we're going to write some simple variables so we can write that function we are going to number one write the path <clears throat> which is going to be the path to the folder that we have um that we have all of our uh, student images in, which is student images. And then we're gonna create an array <coughs> called student image, which as this name says, all of the images of the students. And we're gonna create a list for that. <coughs> and then the student names, student name. So we need to get the names of each and every student too. So we're gonna create a list for that too. And then we're, we're also going to create a list for all the encodings, but that's going to be in another function. <coughs> so, what we're going to do is we are simply going to write my list is going to be equal to, and before we do that, we also need to import OS. Um, and I'll talk about what OS means and everything towards the end of the video, or when we um, finish this snippet of code. So we're going to say, <clears throat> we're going to say my list equal to os dot os dot list dir and then we have to give the path which is just simply the path and now we're going to print my list so now ooh. oh yeah i spelled that wrong so that's a small m and a capital l so now if i yeah whatever so if I run this, I should get the names of everyone on the page. So, oh yeah, so I run uh, the wrong. So we're going to say run smart attendance and we're going to rerun it. Stop and rerun. So as you can see, it basically retrieves all of the images <coughs> 
or the name of all of the images from my student images. So it has Joe Biden.jpg, Joshik.jpg, and Obama.jpg. Now what we're going to do is we are going to first comment this because we don't need this. And we are going to we are going to simply write a for loop over here that that we're going to use in order to store all of the images because we just got the name of the images, right? And do you also see how it says over here dot jpeg? So later on in this video, we we're also going to write a small program to greet each one of these students. So when we do the do that, we don't want our program to say welcome joshik dot jpeg to class because that just sounds weird. So we're all, in this for loop. We're, we're also going to get rid of the dot jpeg part. So we're going to say for cl or classes in my list. So for classes or cl in my list, we want to say current image or c c u r for current and i m g for image is equal to. And we're just going to use the cv two dot i m read instead of the other method we used, which is face rec dot load image file. So. We're going to say cv2 dot im read and the file name is well f and then we're going to say path. Then we're going to say slash. And then seal because as you can see, the path is student images and the file in the class is whatever class we want to choose. So it, it depends on the for loops. So, for example, let me. Yeah. For example, imagine, let me run this again to get the results. But, oh yeah, I commented this. So if we run to get the results again, you will see that, so how this loop basically works is you say for seal in my list. So it's going to go to my list and it's going to retrieve the first, um, first object in my list, which is Joe Biden.jpg. And then over here, our current image is going to be cv2.imread. And then what this basically means is f and then path, as you can see, is student images. So what it's going to say is student images, student images, student under, underscore images, and then it's going to say slash. And then as you can see, co in, in the first iteration of the root, a loop is Joe Biden JPEG. So over here, it's going to say Joe Biden, Joe space Biden dot JPEG. And then as you can see, that's the exact path of our first image. So that's how this basically works. So we're going to get the image and then we're going to add that image to our student image uh, list. So we're going to say student image dot append append basically means to add on to the list and then we want to add on the current image current image now we're also going to have to we're also going to have to give all of these we also have to get rid of the dot jpeg at the end of each one of these names so how are we going to do that well first we're going to say student name dot append because we want to store all all of the names in the student name list and then we're going to say os dot path dot split text and then what text do we want to split well the cl or the class or joe biden dot jpeg and then we're gonna say zero so this is basically going to split joe biden from the dot jpeg part and it's only going to leave us with well it's only going to leave us with joe biden and isn't that what we want and after we do that what we can do is we can print so after we do this whole thing we can print student name now if we print that you can see it says joe biden joe and obama instead of joe biden.jpg joe .jpg, and obama.jpg so i hope you understand this simple for loop now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find the encodings of each and every one of this image so let's go to that shall we so we're going to declare, so we don't need this, nor do we need this print function. So we're going to label that or comment them. And then we're going to say define or def find encoding. 
of the image or find encoding that's going to be your function name and we're just going to have one parameter which is going to be the image images that will will receive or like in our case we're going to have to put in the student image or all the images that we want to encode then we are going to say we're going to create a list to store all of the encoding so encoding underscore list equal to that and then we're gonna we're gonna write a loop in order to get the encoding for each and every image so we're gonna say for image in images and then we're going to say first we're going to resize the image and again you can skip this step if your image or your main image is just like the perfect size but if you used my method to get all of these images which is taking a picture from the windows camera app they're going to be a bit big so we're going to say image equal to resize and then we're going to say image comma 0 0.50 or whatever whatever uh, value you got from your last face detection um so whatever this value whatever this value you got you're going to put it in over here and if your image is just the right size you don't have to then we're going to convert the image to like you can see like the last time we did this we before we converted the image they were like my skin tone was kind of weird and the colors were distorted so we're gonna con we're gonna make that right so we're gonna say image equal to cv2 dot convert color and then our source is image and then we want to say cv2 dot and this is all caps color and then we want to convert from bgr to rgb or we want to convert from blue green red to red green b i mean red green blue which is the normal color palette now what we're going to do is we're going to encode the image so we're going to say encode encode image equal to uh, encode image and we're going to say face rec dot face encodings of the image image and then again we're going to add a zero to the end because this is just an image and not a video and then we're going to say encode list dot append and then you guessed it encode image and then at the end we're going to return the encoding encode list now we have the function where we get our uh, encodings written so i just said fin encoding instead of find encoding now the next thing we're going to do is well we are simply going to plug this into a main video um we're going to plug this into a main video program or we're going to plug this into a while loop that will basically get the get the video and find all of the faces in the image and then compare all of those faces to the faces that we have so what are we going to do well first we're going to say while actually no first we're going to say encode list encode lit underscore list equal to encode i mean find encodings of well we're basically going to find the encoding of student image which as you can see which as you can see are all of the images of the students that we we retrieved from the file using this for loop then we're going to get our video from the webcam so we're going to say vid, vid equal to cv2 dot capture video vid capture video capture and then we're going to say zero because zero basically tells the computer that we, the source of our video is going to be our webcam and if this doesn't work that means you have an external webcam so you can either try one two three or four then we're going to write a while loop so while true true and then we're gonna get each frame individually so success and then frame equal to and then we're gonna say vid dot read so we're basically getting each and every individual frame from our live video then again you don't have to do this but i'm basically just resizing our 
our frame, so our um, program runs a bit faster. So we're going to say frame, frames equal to cv2 dot resize. Now, this is a faster method of the resize function I put over here, but I just uh, use the resize function for these frames because, like, I just feel comfortable using it. But in a while loop, I recommend using this version, which is resize and then frame. And then we're going to say zero, zero. And then none. And then we're going to say 0 0.25 and 0 0.25. Um, why is the none? Oh, yeah, it's a capital N and then an O and E. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to... We are actually going to convert the color. So... So, how are you going to co convert the color? Well, I'm pretty sure you know this, so I'm going to give you about five seconds to think think through it and convert the color, because this is actually a really um, useful command that you ha you'll have to learn. So how about five seconds to memorize, and if you need more time, then, well, pause the video. Did you get it? Well, if you didn't, then that's perfectly fine because we're going to go over it right now. We're going to say frames equal to cv2 dot convert color. The short form for convert is cvt color. And then our source is going to be frames. And then we're going to say cv2 dot color, color. And then what do we want to convert it from? Well, we want to convert it from BGR to RGB. So that's what we're going to do. Now, since we have all of our frames converted to the right position, what we're going to do is we are now going to recognize all the faces in the frames because there could be multiple students entering the class at the same time. So we need to be able to detect multiple people in a frame at the same time. So in order to do that, we need to detect all of the faces in the frame. So we're going to say faces underscore in underscore frame equal to and then again, we're going to use the face recognition package we downloaded. So face rec, and then dot face location. And then our image source is going to be frames. And this is, and since this is a, so now that's where we're, that's how we're going to get the face locations. And then we're going to encode all of the faces in the frame. So we're going to say encode underscore in underscore frame. And then we're going to, again, use the face recognition package. And then we're going to say, and then we're going to say face encoding, face encodings of frames. And then over here, you see how it says known face locations equal to none? Well, we don't want that. That's actually the default. So we want to change that. Our known face, uh, face locations in the frame are faces in frame. Now. Since we have all of our faces encoded, our next step logically is to well detect all the faces. And we're going to do that in our next part, which I'm just going to cut to in three, two, one. Hey guys, so, so now, as you can see, we completed our face detection program, which was pretty cool. So we learned how to identify, recognize, and distinguish faces. So we basically did a face detection program. So now what we're going to do is we are going to write a simple program that basically completes our project of the video, which is making a smart attendance system. So you know, before we do that, I want you to do oh, two of two things. Number one, I want you to create a folder in the smart attendance system folder. And inside that folder, I want you to name that folder student images. And inside that folder, I want you to choose three or more images of the people that you want to recognize. So as, I, as you can see, I want to recognize Elon Musk, myself, and Mark Zuckerberg. And again, uh, so in order to make the process that we're going to do work, you have to name each one of the pictures, the name of the person in the picture, .jpg. So now without any further ado, let's write our program. So just like we start any program, we're going to import all the libraries that we'll need or all the packages we'll need, which are import cv2, import numpy as np because numpy is too long and import face rec face recognition as face rec so now 
since we have that down, let's start our code, shall we? So the first thing we're going to do is, um, I am personally going to get go to face recognition and get the resizing function that we wrote, just because I want to. I also want to resize all of my images in this program too, because the images are too big. And again, this is optional. If your images are just the right size, if they're not too big, you don't have to do this. Now, the next thing we're going to do is what we want to do is we we want to get we want to find an easier way to get the source images of all of the people that we want to detect. Because as you can see over here in the face recognition, we have to manually upload. We have we have to manually upload and find the encodings of each and every person. And since we had only one person we wanted to detect, me or yourself, it wasn't that hard because we only had one person. But imagine this was used be this would be used in real time, where teachers would have to enter. Well, in my school, there's 30 students per class, and there are three classes, which makes it a total of 90 students. So you have to repeat this code for 90 students. Yeah, that's time taking. So we want to find a way to make this easier. So we want to find a way to where we can write a simple for loop to retract all the images, the names of each and every one of those images, and the encodings of, ima of those images straight out of this folder. So you just um, upload the students you want to recognize in the folder and it gets it. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to write a simple for loop to get the name, image, and encoding of each and every student. And in this case, we only have three, but you can have more. And now what we're going to do is, as I said, we're going to write, a, write the for loop. But before we do that, we're going to declare some variables. We're going to declare path, which is basically the name of the folder that our um, students' uh, source images are, which is student images. Then we have the, then we're going to write, uh, we're going to declare two lists in order to store the images in the encoding of each one of the students inside. So we're going to say student image equal to list. And we're actually going to find the encoding in another for loop. For now, we're just going to find the um, pictures. We're going to get the pictures of each and every person and the name. So we're going to say student name. And we're also going to create a list. Now, guys, what we want to do is we first want to get we want to get the names of each and every one of the person inside the student images. And we want to store that in a list so we can say my list is equal to. And in order to extract uh, the names of or the names of each and every one, or the names of the pictures in the student images folder, we, what we want to do is we want to import a package, which is going to be import OS. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say OS dot, and then we're going to say list dir, so this basically extracts the uh, name of each and every one of the images from student images. And we are going to tell, um, we're going to tell the, program from where do we want to extract the images from which in our case is path because the path has the name of the folder now let us continue what we're going to do now is we're basically going to print the path so print path now if we print that so oh yeah it's not path we're supposed to print my list because that's where all of the names of each and every one of those images is. So as you can see, it says Elon Musk.jpg, Joe Schick.jpg, and Mark Zuckerberg.jpg. And I know how there's a .jpg at the end, and we'll fix that in the for loop that we're going to write. So let's write the for loop where we basically extract the actual names of the people. So we like uh, take off this .jpg. And also each and every picture or these three pictures and we store them in the student image list because this just brings out the names of the images, not the images themselves. So we're going to write a for loop. And now we want to store the image in the name of each person. And we want to do that in like an order, in a nice order. So we want to find the image. We want to store the image in the name of a person's image. We want to do that one by one. So we want to go Elon Musk first. Elon Musk.jpg first. Then we want to go to the next one, which is joshik.jpg. 
Then we want to go to the next one, which is markzuckerberg.jpg. So in order to do that, we're going to write a for loop. We're going to say for CL in my list. So what this basically does is it goes, so what, so if this was the first iteration or the first time this loop was running, CL would be stored with the value of Elon Musk.jpg because that's the first item in the my list list. And then if it's the second iteration, it would say Josh, it would have the, it would have, um, the value of CL would be Joshik.jpg because it's the second iteration and this is the second object in my list. And for Mark Zuckerberg.jpg, it's the same thing. Since it's a third iteration in CL, there would be Mark Zuckerberg.jpg because this is the third thing in the my list. So now since we have that out of the way, let us write three lines of code in order to store the images and the names of each and every one of the students. So we're gonna say current image is equal to, and we're just gonna use the cv2.im uh, IM read because that's easier and we're not gonna use the face recognition method. So we're gonna say cv2.im read, and first the file name. So we want to have, we want to have the source of we want to have the source of the image that we want to retrieve now this is going to be a bit different we're going to say f of first of all the path because inside the path is the name of the folder of our image and then slash and now we want over here we want the path of the image or the name of the image we want to retrieve and if you remembered uh, about if you remember the logical explanation i gave you you would remember that in each iteration, the name of our folder would be stored in CL. So over here, we're gonna say CL. And now, what we want to do is we want to add this current image variable to our student image list because we want to store all the images in a list. So we're gonna use the append function. We're gonna say student image dot append. And what do we want to add on to the student, student image list? We want to add on current image. And then for the name, it's actually really simple. We're gonna use the append function again. So we're gonna say student name dot append. And we, what, what do we want to append? We want to append CL. But the problem is that, as you can see, when we append CL, the whole thing comes in. So it's Elon Musk dot JPEG. But we don't want that. We only want the name to be Elon Musk and that's it. So what we want to do is we want to divide the, we want to divide this name into two parts the name of the image itself, which is Elon Musk, and the .jpg part. So in order to do that, we're gonna use OS again. We're gonna say OS dot text split, or um, I think it's uh, split text. So we're gonna say OS dot path dot split text. And now, what do we want to split the text of? We want to split the text of CL. And as, as you can see, our image splits into two parts the name itself, which in this case is Elon Musk, and the .jpg part. So now, we want the first part. We want the first part of the uh, of the two um, two versions of this name. So now, if you remember uh, your basic list, um, list, um, if you remember your basic list knowledge, you'll know that the first item in a list doesn't go by the number one, but instead it goes by the number zero. And that applies here. So the first part of the of this name doesn't go by the number one, instead it goes by the number zero. So that's why we're gonna enter a zero over here. And now we're gonna print the student name just to make sure we have everything down. Now it should work in a second. As you can see, it says Elon Musk, Joshik, and Mark Zuckerberg versus Elon Musk.jpg, Joshik.jpg, and Mark Zuckerberg.jpg. And in order to clarify the um, the name the like the names get split into two parts thing, what we're going to do is instead of saying getting the first part, we're going to get the second part is the dot jpeg. So now now if I run this, you'll see that the output is all dot jpeg. So I hope you understand this part. So in our next part, what we're going to do is we are going to find the encodings of each and every one of the images on on the frame so let's get into that hey guys so um we just completed on getting the name and image of all of those sample images in our student images folder and now we're going to find the encoding of each and every one of those images in the student images folder and we're going to store all of those encodings in a list so 
in order to do that, we're going to write a function. So we're going to say def or define, and then we're going to write the function's name, which is going to be find encoding. And then we just need one input value, which is going to be um, images or the list of all of the images that we have to find the encoding of. Then we're going to declare a list called image encodings equal to, and we're going to declare it as list. And now what we're going to do is we are going to write a for loop. So we're going to say for image in images. And we're going to do this so we can encode each image one by one. So we get one image from the images list that we encode it. We store it in the image encodings list, and then we move on to the next one. So that's why we wrote the for loop. So we're going to say image. So before we um, encode this image, we're going to have to change the image a bit. So number one, first of all, we want to resize the image. Now this is optional, but I'm doing this because, um, well, I just find, uh, because my images from, uh, my images from the student image, I took them off of the camera app from, I took them off the camera app from, uh, windows. So that's, that's why I am, that's why I'm making them smaller because they're really big, but it does work even if your images are big, but I just like to make my images smaller. So we're going to say resize. We want to resize image and we want to resize it by 0 0.50. Now we're going to write, we're going to change the image color. So whenever we get an image, it's kind of like in a weird BGR color, which kind of makes your skin look blue. I hope you remember that from our first part of the video. So we're going to do the same thing as we did in the first part of the video to solve it. We're going to convert the color palette from um, from BGR to RGB. So in order to do that, we say CV2 that convert color. And what do we want to convert the color of? Well, we want to convert the color of image and we want to convert it from. So we're going to say CV2 and we want to convert it from BGR to RGB. So there's that. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find the encoding of each one of these images. So we're going to say encode image equal to face rec dot face encoding. And we're going to say the encoding of image and we're going to add a zero because it's an image. Now, the next thing we're going to do is once we get the encoding of the images, we want to add that encoding to the image encodings list. So in order to do that, we use the append function. So we're going to say image encoding dot append. So what do we want to append or add to the image encodings list? Well, we want to add the encode image. Now we, we can, we have a list full of the encodings of each and every one of the, of the sample images. So now what we're going to do is we're going to return that, um, encode image encodings list because we'll need that in our program. Now, since we have this function defined, we are going to write our while loop. Uh, uh, yeah, our while loop uh, on where we get we're, on where we get live feed from our camera. Break it up into frames, find the faces in those frames, and compare those faces. So let's do that. But bef before we do that, we need to do two things. We need to number one get a live stream from our webcam, and number two, we need to get the encodings of all of the faces or all of the student pictures. So we're gonna say. So in order to do that, we're going to say, um, we're going to say encode list. So we're going to create a variable encode list and we're going to say find encodings and the list of images that we want the encoding of our student image, as you can see. So we're going to say student image. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a live feed from our webcam. So in order to do that, we say vid equal to cv2.capture cv2.capture, I mean video capture, and then we're going to capture, uh, we're going to video capture zero, or we're go we want live feed from our camera. Now, if zero doesn't work, um, you probably have an external camera, so you can, you can try out one, two, three, or four, and they should work. Now, we're going to write our while loop, so while true, and now what we're going to do is we are first going to break our live feed into frames so we can process each frame. So we're going to say success frame equal to vid dot read. Now we're getting, we're turning our video 
our live stream of our webcam video into frames so we can process those frames. Then we want to make the frames a little smaller because well it just makes it just makes the whole thing easier to process. It makes the it makes it easier to process for the laptop so our processing rates will be greater. Or um our program won't be as laggy. So in order to do that, we're actually going to use a different method to resize other than making our own function, which is going to be cv2.resize. So we're going to say smaller underscore frames equal to resize, actually no, cv2.resize. And now we just gave it some parameters or inputs. So number one, our source, which is going to be frame. And then we're going to say zero, zero. And then we want none. And then we are going to say 0 0.25 and 0 0.25. Oops, 0 0.25 and 0 0.25. And the reason none isn't an error because is because there has to be a capital N. Now everything is fine, for the most part. So the while loop for oh yeah, so um there was a false indent. That should yeah. So now we have no errors. Now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to well we're we're going to find all of the faces in our frame because when students are entering the classroom there could be multiple students entering the classroom where they could be multiple faces slash students in the frame so we want to find each and every one of the each and every one face one of the faces in our frame and then we want to compare each one one every one of those faces in our frame to our sample images so in order to do that what we're going to do is we are going to, well, first we're going to find all of the faces in our frame. So we're going to say faces in frame. And in order to do that, we say face rec dot face location. And then, um, well, where's like, what image am I supposed to get the face locations from? So over here, we're supposed to input that. So we want to get the face locations from smaller frame. We want to get it from there to so smaller frames. Now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to encode we are going to encode each of the face in our frame so then we can later use that encoding to compare it with um, the other with our original sample images. So we're going to say encode faces in frame and then we're going to say face rec dot encode face encoding and now we're going to actually give it two parameters number one we're going to give it the location of all the faces in the frame we know and before we do that we have to give it the source of where like our face is or like where where is the image in where we want to find the encoding of so we're going to say the source which is smaller frame smaller frame and then the faces or all of the faces in our frames. So we're going to say faces in frame. The location of all of the faces in our frames. In our frame. So now, what we're going to do next is we are going to write a simple for loop that basically allows us to compare all of the encoding of the faces in the frame with our original set, original encoding of the pictures, guys. So we're going to compare all of the faces in the frame with our original pictures. So we're going to write a simple for loop for that. We're going to say for encode face and then face look or face location. And again, we're writing a for loop because there will be multiple faces in the frame. And we want to go through each and every one of those fa faces in the frame one by one. And we're going to say in zip. And then um, we're going to give the values of of the encoding of all of the faces in the frame. So encode faces in frame. Oops, encode faces in frame. Encode faces in frame. And the faces in frame. So we know the location of the faces in frame. And again, as I said, we're using zip because we're getting uh, two values from two individual lists. So we can use zip so we can just do that in one for loop. And again, we're writing the for loop so we can um, compare, face, uh, compare all of the faces uh, one by one. So now what we're going to do next is we are going to first have matches and we're going to have it compare, we're going to have it compare all of our, uh, we're going to have it compare the face in the frame with all of our sample images. So matches equal to faces 
I mean, um, match is equal to, well, um, we want it to equal to face rec dot face compare or compare faces. And then our known faces or the list of the known faces is up here. You can see it's student image. So we're going to say, uh, so we want the encoding of the list of the known faces, which is encode list. And then we also want the encoding of the face we're comparing it with. So encode face. Now, we also, once we find the match, we also want to find uh, the distance or the face distance. So how far away is the face in our frame away from um, our three sample images? So we're going to say face this equal to face this equal to face rec or not, not face look, face rec dot. And then we're going to say face distance. And now since we're giving, we're giving this the input of, um, so like since we're giving it an encode list, which is a list with three um, objects, it's going to give us an output of also three objects, which is kind of nice. And then we're going to say encode face because that's the encoding of the face we're comparing it with. Now guys, what we're going to do is we are going to print the face distance just so we can see it. And then we are also going to match. We're also going to have a match index, which basically finds um, the, uh, the least from all face. Uh, so like it finds the least amount or the lowest amount from the face distance. So match index equal to np dot argument argmin argmin and then we're going to say face this now we're going to write an if condition to see if um uh if the face is matched up and if it did in in which case it actually did since the faces match up we are going to find out we are basically going to inside this in if condition so let's write that if condition so we're going to say if matches of the match index match index so now if there's a if there if the face in our frame compares or matches one of these sample images we want to draw a rectangle around that face and under that rectangle we want to have the name of the person so we're going to say first we're going to have the name which is going to be name um name is equal to student name so we're going to get the name out of the student name list of match index because that's going to tell us whether it's zero, one, or two. And then we're going to say dot upper, you know, just so our name is in all caps. And then what we're going to do is we are going to get the y, the X and Y axes of the face location so we can draw a rectangle around it. So we're going to say Y of one, Y of one, X of two, Y of two, and x of 1 from face look or face location now do you remember how all of these calculations like the face location and all of these calculations are based off our smaller frame well when we show our output we don't want our output to be shown as the smaller frame instead we want the output to be shown as the bigger frame or the original frame because it looks better so if we just use these values on the original frame it's going to be off by a lot so we'll have to convert these values or multiply each one of these values times four in order in order to bring these points back to normal. Because as you can see, we divided um, the side length by 0 0.25 or one by four or one fourth because 25% is one fourth. So in order to bring it back, logically, we have to multiply each and everything by four. So we're going to so we're going to copy this. We're going to say this equal, and then we're going to multiply each and everything by four. So let's do that. Now that we have the, now that we have the Y and X values all matched up, what we're going to do next is we, we are going to draw the rectangle. So we're going to say CV2 dot rectangle. Uh, so first we have to give it the source for what image we're supposed to draw the rectangle on, which is frame. And then the points, which is x of 1, y of 1, and then x of 2, y of 2. And again, we're giving this the points in a tuple. Then we are going to go over to the color. 
which I am going to give it a green, maybe, because, you know, why not? Then we have the thickness, which I'm going to give a thickness of two, maybe three. Yeah, three, why not? Now, underneath the tri triangle or the bounding box of the face, we want another triangle that's filled in and very thick. And inside that triangle, we want the name of the person. So we're going to say cb 2 rectangle. I'm sorry, I meant rectangle, not triangle. And then again, we want to draw this rectangle on the frame. Now the points are going to be slightly off. So it's still going to be x of 1. But since this has to be underneath um, this main rectangle, we're going to say um, y of 2. So y2 minus 25. And then in this tuple, we just say x of 2 and y of 2. Then, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to give it a color. I'm just going to give it green again because it fits our main box. And then we want the green to fill the whole box. So we will say cv2.filled. Now let's write the text. So we say cv2.putText. And then we first have to tell on what, on what image I'm supposed to put the text. So frame. And then... I believe we say what is the text? The text is going to be the name of the student, which is in the variable name. Then we have x1 plus, and then the location is going to be x of x1 plus 6 and y2 minus 6. And y2 minus 6. And then we are going to give it a font, um, font, like font face, which is going, you can give it anything, but I'm going to say font Hershey complex. Hershey, yeah, Hershey complex. And then the font scale is one. The color is going to be white because um, it it like contrasts with green. And then our thickness is going to be a thickness of two. Now, since we have the text, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to show the image. So we're going to say cv 2im show frame. Let me. And then since this is going to be a video, we're going to say cv 2weight key. We want a weight key of one. Now guys, for the grand reveal. Will our program work? So let's run our program to see if it will work. Any second now, it's gonna take a bit of time because we have 55 lines of code. So, well, okay, so, um. You're also get, supposed to give a name for the window in which our frame is going to be showed. So I'm going to say video. Now it should work. I think. So as you can see, it's working. Let's go. So it, it detected my face. You can see it detected my face. Um, but just to make sure, I'm going to bring up the image of Elon Musk over here. And as you can see, it says Elon Musk. And if I kind of space it out and I also bring myself beside here. Actually, if I go back a bit and kind of bring Elon Musk a bit up front, it should be able to detect both of her faces. Um, yeah, so as you can see, it detected both of her faces both Elon Musk and myself, and also Mark Zuckerberg, which it should be able to detect. So as you can see, it says Mark Zuckerberg. And now, as you can see, our program works. Isn't that just great? So as you can see, it, there is a bit of a lag, like a bit of a lag, but that shouldn't really make that big of a deal, especially because we're making an attendance system. So let's stop this program. Now guys, since we have this part done, since we have our main part done, which is the face detection part, we are going to move. We're going to move over. And um, I actually noticed a little fault. I don't know if that's true. Yeah, so um, we're actually going to shift tab this one more time. That's just gonna make our thing a bit more smoother. So if I run this again, it should be smoother. So as you can see, it's a bit better. You could say the frames, they're a bit faster. Um, 
let me put Elon Musk back here. So as you can see, Elon Musk is there, and then Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg. So let's go. So our face detection is working. And our next part, as I said, is to is to well mark the attendance of each one of these students. And we also have to greet the students when they enter the class. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a folder. So we're going to say new or, or file. And now we're going to name this file attendance. Uh, did I name that right? Attendance dot CSV. So in this file, what we're going to do is we are going to, we are basically going to store all of the data on which student came to class at what time. So we're going to say name and time. So if I attended to class right now, it would say something like this. So it would say Joshik and then 640. So we're going to make it something like that, but it's going to be automatic. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to face detection. Or I mean, um, our smart attendance system. And now we are going to write another. We're going to write another. Um, we're going to write another function. So we're going to say define mark attendance. Attendance. And again, the uh, the only input that we'll be taking this time is going to be the names of the students. So we're going to say name. Now let's write our code. So now the first thing we're going to do is we are going to open the we are going to open the attendance attendance.csv file. So we're going to say with with and then we're going to say open and now over here we're supposed to specify what file we want to open. So it's going to be attendance dot csv and we also want to say if we want to read or write in the file and we want to do both and here's why so per se i entered the class and the camera detected me now many times when students enter the class the teacher is there to greet them and um they also take a quick uh five seconds to greet their teachers or to talk discuss really quick a really quick question or personal question they had about whatever so they all have a quick chit chat with the teacher so when it does that, what happens is our program detects the face, and if we don't read what is in the folder, it's going to continuously say the student's name and what time they attended. It's going to repeat that until they're in the frame. But we don't want to do that. We want to mark the attendance of a student only one time. So that's exactly what we're going to do over here. So we want to read the file so we can check if we already wrote down that the student came to class, and we want to write the we want to be able to write in the file, you know, in order to um, write down when which student came to class at what time. So now, what we're going to say is, so over here we're actually supposed to say as if. And now what we're going to do is we are going to read all of the lines in the, we're going to read all of the lines in the attendance.csv file in order to make sure that we already haven't, um, written down the name of the student that we just detected because again as i said some students just stand near the door where our camera can detect uh, the student just to have a quick chit chat with the teacher so we are going to say we're going to create a uh, list so we're going to say my list or my data list is going to be equal to f dot read lines now we have all the lines in my data list. Now we're going to have a list called name list. And now what we're going to do is we're going to write a simple for loop in order to store all the names of all of the students that have already been um, all the name of all the students that have already been uh, written down on our attendance sheet. So we're going to say for line in my data list. And then the for loop, we're going to say entry equal to, and we only want the name, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to write some simple code to where we only want the first part of the comma. We don't want the second part of the comma. So over here, we're going to say entry equal to line split dot split. And when, where do we want the line to split at? We want the line to split at the comma. Then we're going to... Um, we're going to write name list dot append 
and then we're gonna say entry and since we want the first part of the entry or since this line is going to be broken up into two pieces this is the first and this is the second we want the first piece so we're gonna type in zero and again the reason we're typing in zero is because in a list or in many programming languages the first term is actually not referred by the number one instead it's referred by the number zero now since we have all now in this for loop we gather the name of all of the students that have already been written down in the attendance sheet and over here we're going to see if the student that we're detecting is already in the attendance sheet so we're going to say if name not in uh name list so if we haven't written down the name of the student yet we're going to write it down so we're going to say First, we need the date and time. So we're gonna say now equal to date time. Oh yeah, so we also need to, uh, we also need to import a package that allows us to tell our program or the date and time. So we're gonna say import date, uh, I mean, from date time. So I'm pretty sure it's from date time, import date time. So from date time, import date time. Now, since we have that uh, package imported, what we're going to do is we are basically going to head over here or wherever. Yeah, now we're going to say now is equal to datetime dot now. And then we're going to say time string. So the format is going to be. Uh, so we just want the hours and minutes. So we're going to say percentage H come. I mean this and then percentage M. You can also add seconds, but I don't want to. And then what we're going to do next is we are going to write that down. So we're going to say F dot right line. And then we're going to say um, F. And then we want this to be in the next line. So we're going to say slash in. And now we are going to say, actually, that's the wrong slash slash in. And we are going to write, first of all, the name and then comma the time stream. Now, since we have that out of the way, what we're going to do next is we, so that's all. So now if we go, now what we're going to do over here is we're going to call that function. So we're going to say um, attendance, mark attendance, I think is the name of the function. Mark attendance, I think. Um, mark attendance, yeah, capital M mark attendance and the name is going to be name now oh no i don't want to exit now if i run this program again so as you can see there's nothing in attendance.csv and if i run this program i'm going to stay out of the frame so the computer doesn't see me and again i'm going to go back here so let it initialize that should take a second or two mm. So it's actually up and running. So let's put that in. So as you can see, it de already detected my face because I barely peeked, but that's okay. So now if I minimize this, you can see it has Joe shake and yeah, we have something wrong. So th this was the problem I was talking about. It's going to repeat my name for a long time. So let's see what I got wrong or what I messed up on. So let's go back to the smart attendance system. And I'm pretty sure it's something to do with the if condition. If name not in name list. So I don't see what I did wrong. Um, let's see. Name list dot append entry of zero. Uh, so, oh, I see what I did wrong. So, can you guys spot out what I did wrong? So, actually, where we went wrong is, and again, if you think about this, this is hilarious. So, where we actually went wrong is, number one, um, so actually, let's run this program again. You know, just to, um, oops, before we run that, let's stop that program. Let's delete these. And now, if I run this again, oh, oh, no, I'm running the wrong way. So, if I run this program again, You'll be able to see that the problem is that whenever I am being detected, which I will be detected in a second, I'm pretty sure the program is still being like, yeah, so it started. So as you can see, I'm, I'm being detected. That's perfecto. 
but if I minimize this, if I minimize this, you can see that I, th there are two problems. Let me pause the program. There are two problems. Number one, the date and time is not correct. Like by no means is the time H, hours and M minutes. And number two, I am being registered into class multiple times. So we want to avoid that. So what are we going to do? Well, here's the problem, and this is hilarious. Number one, for the times, um, the time, it's actually a syntax error. So we're not just supposed to type time string equal to this. We're supposed to type, we're actually supposed to type um, now dot str at time. And yes, this is hilarious. So the reason our, uh, we have myself attending, uh, being registered in the attendance sheet multiple times is because over here, as you can see, I gave a space between the slash in and the n. Yes, so isn't that hilarious? And I'll tell you why this is bad. Because as you can see, uh, because as you can see, when I do that, the name will not be in the name list because what is my name? Well, the name is Joshik. So when I detect it, it's going to be Joshik. But how did I write this name in the attendance.cv? Well, I wrote this name in attendance.cv as space Joshik. So Joshik and space Joshik aren't the same thing. So even the space can throw off the whole um, program. So what I want you to do is I want you to make sure that there's no space between this and the slash in. Now, if I run this, um, that should be fixed, hopefully, fingers crossed. So if we, um, if we wait for some time again, the reason this is slow because is because, well, it's a lot of code and you need to give it some time to compile. So as you can see, uh, my face has been detected and I'm staying on the computer for a long time. So if I now minimize, voila, I've been only registered one time. And as you can see, it says 1916. And um, the reason it says 19 is because um, Python follows the 24 hour clock. So instead of the 12 hours. So if you subtract 12 from 19, it's 7. So 7, 16 p.m. Yes, finally, we got it. And um, we are also going to, um, I'm also going to do a demo with the other two, Mark Zuckerberg and um, Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk. But before we do that, we're just going to write one more bonus code. What, so what this is basically going to do is this is going to greet the students whenever they come into the class. So it's going to say, welcome to class in the student's name. So this is actually really easy. This basically takes any time. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to have to download a library. So we're going to go to file settings. And then we are going to. So the package we're going to download is Pi. Teet oh, oh no, I meant. So you go over here, you go to project, you go to Python interpreter, and then you click on the plus. And now the uh, the package we have to download is PYTTX, I mean SX3, SX3. And I'm pretty sure this is just a fancy term of saying text to speech. So yeah, t the text to speech library for Python 2 and 3. So you're gonna have to download this. I already have this package downloaded. So um, I'm not going to do it. And if you want to check if you have this package downloaded, you have to come over here and under the package, you have to check if it's downloaded and you can see it says PYTTSX3. So let's import that package. We're going to say import PY. Yeah. And now this since this is hard to type. We're going to say text speech, text speech. Now, again, as I said, this is really easy. Number one, we have to declare the text to speech. Um, text speech library through a variable so we're going to say engine is going to be equal to well text to speech dot in it now we're going to go to a mark attendance and under the if condition over here what we're going to do is we're going to write number one we are going to say engine dot say so engine dot say and then inside here we are going to write what it's supposed to say. So it's going to say, welcome, welcome to class. And then plus the name of the student, which is just going to be name. And then to end this off, we're going to say engine dot run and wait, run and wait. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to attendance.csv. I'm going to delete this. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run this program. So it should work when I run this program. 
So what it's going to do is whenever it detects me or Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg, the program should say, welcome to class, my name or the other Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk's name. So if we run the program, um, if we run the program, it should pop up any second now. So I'm actually going to make my camera blank. So um, because like the frame, so as you can see, my camera is blank. Now if I unblank it. Welcome to class, J-O-S-H-I-K. So do you, do you see how it says welcome to class, but then it kind of spells out my name, which is kind of awkward. Yeah, I know. So let's try that again with Elon Musk. Welcome to class, Elon Musk. So um, for some reason, it says Elon Musk's name out loud, but for my name, for some reason, it just spells out my name. Maybe um, that's just, maybe that's just something that happens sometimes because I run this program one more time before and this didn't happen. So we don't want that to happen. We don't even want to take a chance because that just sounds awkward. So what we're going to do is we are going to say statement, statement is going to be equal to SDR of, well, it's going to say, so we're going to copy down this. So control X and control V. And now over here, we're gonna type in statement. Now, if I delete this, oh no, that's the wrong one. So attendance.csv, I delete this. Let me actually get out of all of these out of the way because they're kind of distracting. Now, if I run this, it should say, welcome to class in my name, not J-O-S-H-I-K. So any second now. So as you can see, I have, uh, I have now if I unblank it, Welcome to class J-O-S-H-I-K. So for some reason, it still says my name as J-O-S-H-I-K, but that should be fine. Just with, um, uh, just as some time passes, it should work. Whereas if I come in and show up Mark Zuckerberg's image. Welcome to class Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, um, I mean, this is a Python library. We can't expect that much, can we? Welcome to class Elon Musk. So there, there's kind of a bit of a lag, but again, that's because I have a lot of things running on my laptop currently. So as you can see, I have a lot of things running on my laptop. And again, um, if you run this program a couple of times, uh, the J-O-S-H-I-K thing should pass because, yeah, I, I, run, I run this uh, sometimes and it passed away, so you don't have to worry about that. But that is how we make an automatic and smart attendance system using face detection guides. Again, thank you for watching until the end. I hope you learned some, uh, a thing or two about Python and OpenCV. Again, thank you for watching until the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video if you liked my explanation and press on the bell icon for more Python videos like these. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below. And if you have any corrections or any um, recommendations, also please feel free to comment them down below. Again, thank you for watching. Have a nice day. See you. Bye-bye.